May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, this is my first video doing a, a homily, and the past uh, three weeks we've had what I call the Marathon uh, Gospels, and this uh, week is no different, um, but I was happy to hear uh, Tessa read the uh, Old Testament uh, rather than a reading of the Gospel. We'll save that for uh, another time. So, can these dry bones live? These are strange and difficult times indeed. A month ago, we were thinking about things like, where will I take my holidays this year? Or what restaurant do I want to go to next? When is the next family gathering? Or how are the kids or the grandkids really doing? And what are they up to now? And today, now, we are thinking things like, when will this pandemic end? When can I get back to my regular routines? When will I be able to go back to my church? Or will I have a job? Or will I get sick? And will I survive? How will I manage financially? Where is God in all of this? Is this the end? I think that the readings can really speak to us today in this moment. The reading from Ezekiel, which Tessa read today, is the story of the Valley of Dry Bones. It may seem like we are in that valley now, that everything around us has dried up and all around us is devastation and impending disaster. The word of God comes in a question and asks Ezekiel in the story, can these bones live? And Ezekiel's response can only be, O oh Lord God, you know. And maybe it seems like God is also asking us these same questions in our own current situation. Can we live? Or maybe we ourselves are asking the question, are we going to make it? It is a question, I think, of our survival. It is a question for us personally regarding our own health, the health of our family members, of our friends and our fellow parishioners. Will we make it? And what about our jobs, our young people, our finances, our money? Will it last? Will I have enough? Will I have a job or a place to live? Everything, it seems, is in question now. And what about our community and our country? Will we recover? Will we, re -survive? Will we survive? Is it going to be okay? And what about our church, our spiritual home of St. Francis? Can we last? These are all serious questions for a very serious time. The answer is that only God knows. And this is God's response, I think, to both Ezekiel and to us. Prophesy to the bones that they may come back to life. And when Ezekiel finds the bones with sinew and muscle and skin, but no breath, God calls him to prophesy then to the breath so that those dry, lifeless bones will live. This is still God's message for us today in this disturbing uncertainty and upheaval. God is still the life-giving breath that comes to the dry anxiety of our soul. God is the life giver and we are still connected to God and Jesus who in the gospel declares that he is the resurrection and the life. The story of raising of Jesus' friend Lazarus is also a key message for us today. God and Jesus is able to raise from the dead Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha, who are also themselves in a deep depression and despair. They only become hopeful when Jesus enters into their midst. And if he had only been there, they say, this would never have happened, Jesus. So now if Jesus would only speak the word, everything would be all right. And the word that Jesus speaks is this, I am the resurrection and the life. 
And Jesus is still that resurrection today. Jesus is still that life. In this uncertain time of fear, anxiety, and stress for both our physical, financial, and community well-being, we look to God. We look to Jesus to breathe new life in us, to call us by name and bring us back from the brink of death. We call on Jesus to bring us to a place of hope, of life, of strength, of compassion, of love, and of forgiveness and peace. God will see us through this valley of dry bones that we find ourselves in. I, yes, I believe that. The Psalm 23 so descriptively says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou spreadst the table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely thy goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Be well and safe, my friends. Amen. Amen.